This week on the GCN Racing News Show, the world's media descends on Andalusia as Chris Froome starts his season, Classics riders get the ball rolling in Oman, the busy French early season continues in the Tour de Ovar, we're in Portugal for the Volta Algarve, and the cyclocross season comes to a close in Belgium. Four times the normal number of journalists attended this year's Ruta del Sol in Spain. Not because the racing was due to be any more exciting or spectacular than usual, but simply because it marked the return to racing of Team Sky's Chris Froome. Controversial for the simple reason that the case of his adverse analytical finding for salbutamol remains unresolved. It's a complicated topic, since under UCI rules, he is allowed to compete, and had it not been for an internal leak, none of us would even know about this, unless he is ultimately found guilty of wrongdoing. But we do know. Everybody knows. And it could be argued that by racing, he's bringing negative publicity to pro cycling. And goodness only knows that our sport could do without more of that. However, we asked you last week what you thought, and 54% of you said that you think Froome should race through to the decision of his case. Fortunately though, since Froome didn't win anything, attention soon switched to those who did. On stage one, Sasha Modelo became the second rider this year to raise his arms in celebration prematurely, while Thomas Buda had already crossed the line first on the other side of the road. Modelo did make amends on day three though, taking his first win in his new EF Education First colours. Stage two, the day before, was the first hilltop finish up the brutally steep Alto de Ayanadas. Tim Wellens did what he does best, attacking with just over a kilometre to go and showing the pure climbers how it's done. Almost. He was brought back before the line as Wout Pauls timed his acceleration perfectly to take the win. Wellens did get his just desserts on stage four though, attacking at the bottom of the final steep climb along with Mikael Lander. The Belgian was far more at home on the cobbles, comfortably taking the stage win and with enough time over Pauls to take the leader's jersey. Which he duly kept by finishing eighth in the final stage time trial, won by Team Sky's new recruit, David De La Cruz. Interestingly, that 14 kilometer test took in some Strada Bianca style gravel roads, which we have to say look pretty cool. Well done to Tim Wellens though, he is always a fun rider to watch racing. And so it seems fitting to make him this week's Rider of the Week. So while Team Sky may have missed out on the overall in Andalusia, they more than made up for that with a particularly dominant display at the Volta Algarve, taking three of the five stages and the overall. The first uphill finish came on day two, Mikhail Kwiatkowski getting a fine lead out from Kenny Ellison and Garant Thomas to take his first win of the year ahead of Trek Segafredo's Bauka Molima. Without bonus seconds though, the GC hinged on the following day's time trial. The early pace was set by European TT champ Victor Campenart, and in the end, the only rider who could get the better of him was overnight race leader Garant Thomas. With a 22 second lead in the GC over teammate Kwiatkowski, the overall result was at that point never really in doubt. Or so we thought. That was until there was a twist in the tail on the final day, with a strong 31 rider group going clear in the beginning. Thomas wasn't there, but fortunately for Team Sky, Kwiatkowski was. He managed the situation well, negating a threatening attack from Zdek Stibar and eventually going on to take a second stage win and the GC one minute and 31 seconds ahead of Thomas. The other two stages were won by Dylan Gronewegen who continued his good early season form for Lotto and El Yumbo. The trio of Middle Eastern races continued last week with the Tour of Oman. The race was bookended with sprint finishes won by Brian Cockard and Alexander Kristoff respectively. Once again though, we already had a selective stage on day two. 15 riders broke clear in the closing stages and the best of them all was Nathan Haas. That was the Australian's first win for Katusha, but also his first win in 18 months and his elation was not only clear to see, but also hear as he crossed the line. Greg Van Avermaet was pipped to the post, but he more than made up for that the following day, sprinting up the final few hundred meters to the line and winning by a clear three seconds. Watch out for him at Omloop Het Newsblad on Saturday. He could well go three in a row. Magnus Court Nielsen's consistency so far this season was rewarded with a stage win on day four. Pretty amazing when you consider that he broke his collarbone in December, but it was stage five up Green Mountain that would, as ever, decide the race. And it was Team Astana that crushed it. At one point, there were just three riders remaining at the front, all from that team. 
After Jan Hurt began to feel the pain, he left Miguel Superman Lopez, not his real name, and Alexander Lutsenko to take first and second on the stage, respectively. But it was the latter that would go on to take the overall win, courtesy of bonus seconds throughout the week. Now, one of the talking points came on the final stage when Adam Blythe was disqualified after taking an illegal bike change. Since the vehicles that the teams use aren't your standard team cars, Aqua Blue Sport requested and were permitted to go ahead to set up Blythe's spare bike ready for the change, which they did just after the bunch passed. However, UCI rules state that the change itself has to come from the car and not the side of the road. The weekend couldn't have been much better for Jonathan Iver of Direct Energy at the notoriously tough Tour de Ovar. The Frenchman bagged himself both stages and of course the overall classification with it. The cyclocross season drew to a close in Middlekirk at the weekend with the final round of the Super Prestige. No surprises that Mathieu van der Poel and Sanna Kant finished as they started and pretty much as they have continued for the entire season. Both took overall honours in the series, and for van der Poel, it was his 30th win of the season. Not a bad winter by anyone's standards. And that brings us to a close for this week's racing news show. Next week, we'll see the season start properly, at least in our opinion. The cobbled classics begin in Belgium with Omloop Het Newsblad and Kern Brussels Kern. Make sure you join us then. <laughs>